So now that we know the importance of antiderivatives and definite integrals, let's take a look at how we can actually use that in a real problem. So here is an example. Example four says, suppose that y is the profit per mile traveled and x is the number of miles traveled in thousands. So thousands represents the amount of miles um, in thousands. Find the area under the graph of y equal to one over x over the interval one to four. So basically we're looking for the area underneath the graph of one over x from 1,000 to 4,000. That's why they're writing one and four. And then interpret the significance of this area. So we're gonna begin by first graphing the function on the xy plane, and this is what the graph looks like pretty much. And we know that when x is one, the graph is gonna be at the point one also. So when x is one, the y is one, and you can find that by just plugging in one to the expression. When x is one, the y is one. What about when x is four? How much is the answer? Well, you plug in four into this expression or this equation, you get four and one over four as an outcome. So what we're doing in this problem is looking for the area underneath the graph of y equal to one over x between the graph, the x-axis, and the numbers one and four. So basically, that's the area that we're looking for in this problem. And how do we find areas underneath curves? At first, we had to do it with Riemann sums, but now we have a new method called the definite integral. So in order to find the area, I'm gonna use the definite integral, and in this case, the area that I'm looking for is gonna be the integral going from one to four, because those numbers were the lower bound and the upper bound. So I'm gonna use the one and four values, and then the expression, or the function in this case, is one over x dx. And as usual, the antiderivative of one over x is gonna be ln of x with an absolute value, and one and four are the upper and lower bound. So we're gonna put one and four next, and plug in the four, plug in the one. So when I plug in the four, I get ln four absolute values minus ln one absolute values. So f this one is the first one, is the upper bound. This one is the second one, which is the lower bound. Again, the four is the upper bound, so that's why it goes in first. The higher one goes in first, the lower one goes afterwards. And this is basically just simply ln four. Keep in mind that ln of four, you can use your calculator to get this value, but it's roughly 1.386 and so on, okay? So that's basically the solution. I'm gonna circle either one of those. This is a real life example, so we can have decimals, it's not a problem, but I prefer the ln four option. But in any case, how do we interpret the significance of this area? What, what does the area mean in this problem? I wrote it out for you so you don't have to worry about writing it down. The interpretation is down here. It's basically the area that you're looking for represents a total profit of $1,386 roughly when the miles traveled increases from 1,000 to 4,000. So that's pretty much it. And again, since the complete area was above the x-axis, I was expecting a positive solution. Now, keep in mind that when your areas are under the x-axis, they count as a negative area. It's kind of a weird thing to say that areas can be negative, but that's how we interpret when areas are underneath the x-axis. So anywhere underneath the x-axis, they would count as negative. So sometimes you have problems where the area underneath the x-axis is really massive, and sometimes the areas above the x-axis are really small. So when you add up the massive negative number with the tiny positive number, your result ends up being negative. So don't be afraid when these answers here turn out to be negative. It just means that you have a lot area underneath the x-axis. So that counts as a loss, basically. Instead of a profit, it would be a loss. And that's kind of the concept that we're talking about in example five. So let's go ahead and plug this into your TI calculator, x cubed plus three x minus one. So we're gonna graph it basically from negative one to two and see what the graph is doing. Is there more area down here or up here? And then predict the sign of the integral. In other terms, predict if the answer is gonna be positive or negative. Then we'll go ahead and evaluate the graph and evaluate, sorry, the integral and find what the answer should be. So we're gonna start by plugging in the x to the power of three plus three x minus one into the y one. I'm gonna click zoom six to turn everything into a standard window setting. And I'm gonna look at the interval going from negative one to two. So negative one is gonna be here, and so the area is gonna be tiny. Two is over here, the area is gonna be massive. To help me see more of the top of this 
problem, I'm going to change my window settings a little bit. I'm going to increase the value of the Y maximum. Instead of 10, let's make it 20. And that way, when I click on graph, I'm going to be able to see a better picture. So let's see. Second trace, I'm starting at negative 1. And if I stop at 0, this is where the graph is going to be. It's all underneath the x-axis. There's a little bit more underneath the x-axis. Now remember, it was going from negative 1 to 2. So let's make the graph from negative 1 to 2. So option number 7, from negative 1 all the way to 2. So some of the area is underneath the x-axis, some of it is above the x-axis. And you can see the, the big chunk of area right here is way bigger than the area down here. Now again, this one is some negative number. This one is some positive number. But when you add them together, it seems like the solution is 5.25. So that's how much space you get at the end of the day. That's not how much actual physical space there is. That's the net result when you subtract the negative value and the positive value from one another. Now let's try to do this by hand. So the integral going from negative one to two, x cubed plus three x minus one dx. So first integrate the x cubed. We get x to the power of four divided by four. Then the 3x, we ignore the 3 and we integrate the x. becomes x squared over 2. Then for the 1, the, the antiderivative is just going to be regular old x. And remember, we're integrating between negative 1 and 2. So according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, we need to plug in the 2, then plug in the 1. So 2 goes in. And this is what we end up with. And let's do the same thing with the 1. So the 2 was the upper bound. This is the reason why 2 was plugged in first. It was right away the upper bound. So that's why I plugged it here into the first bracket. And then the negative 1 was on the bottom. That's the reason why we plugged the negative 1 into the problem at the end. And again, all this is calculator stuff. Don't even bother evaluating it by hand. It's just a waste of time. Let's use a calculator and plug it in. And I believe the answer turns out to be 21 over 4. Okay. By the way, 21 over 4 is the same thing as 5.25. So what my calculator was telling me was actually, in fact, true. So I was able to predict that it was positive because the area on above the x-axis was way bigger than the area underneath the x-axis. And since the areas added up, one of them was tiny and one of them was massive. This one was a tiny amount. This one was a massive amount the negative amount and the positive amount added up somehow to 5.25.